on the phone you told me that you went back to Vietnam in 2006. Copy. Um, so over the phone you told me that you went back to Vietnam in 2006. How was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was, it was wonderful because it uh, had the first hand opportunity to see, uh, to see what happened to Vietnam, what happened after uh, all the soldiers left, what happened to all these places that were bombed, and, and what happened to the people. And it was, it was nice being, it's nice being there to see all the, uh, to see life. And it was like, there were, it was funny because it must have been over 20, 30 years ago. And there were still, in the in grounds in the country, you actually could see some tanks and um, trucks. <laughs> they were all rusted, so it's all rust. But there were flowers growing out of them. <laughs> and so they were all in the ground, and it was all rusted out, but there were flowers growing all around. Was, wow, okay. And everybody was happy and friendly with everybody else. And, Food was great, and uh, no, there were just so many nice things, and, and uh, being able to go to the museums and to see, and just to see how it was all looked at by the Vietnamese. So you just went back for pleasure, just to? No, I went back. I was working at the city college at the time, and there was a tour, and so it was an educational tour. And so I joined, I joined that group and went back to Vietnam. And uh, when we got over there. You know, certain things you do on a tour, but then I split away from the tour group and went into the, uh, the Central Highlands to to go to uh, uh, a city that I was stationed at for about nine months. And so it was nice to be able to to find it. The it was with the hospital. The hospital was no longer there. Uh, it was now a uh, Vietnamese army base. When I introduced myself and I told them who I was, they invited me into the, the base and they had, they, they gave me, we all had sat around and had tea together. Mm -hmm. So with the army people, the Vietnamese army people and that stuff, mm -hmm. and one interpreter was talking. So I said, oh yeah, this is, this is what I did over here. And they were, of course, too young. Yeah, they were a lot younger. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, they were, too, they were too young to have been involved in, with the war. So when you went back, did any um, new things come into light for you? Like, did you realize something you didn't see while you were over there as a soldier? No, no, no. I guess when I left Vietnam, it was, it was. I was wondering. I kept thinking to myself, "What the hell's going to happen here? What's going to happen to this country? What's going to happen to the people?" And uh, no, that it survived, that it moved into a different direction. Uh, yeah, that was so nice. So I have, I, I think about Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, in the Middle East, uh, I think about all the war and the conflict going on there. They too will survive, and in 10, 20, 30 years, people will be going over there on tourism, uh, as a tourist group. So what do you think about the war we are in now, the war on terror, as I like to call it? Yeah, that's a hell of a thing. I mean, <laughs> that's, it really is. Uh, and, uh, no, it actually is very scary because there's, there really is no boundaries. That was the one thing about Vietnam that America finally realized. There is no, uh, there's no front lines here. That every place was a front line. That uh, you can get killed just walking, uh, walking down the street in Vietnam. And so it was, it was open season. And, and uh, and that's why America lost. They didn't know how to fight, you know, with in that sort of uh, unconstrained type of uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so the war on terrorism. Now it's you know, wherever you're at in the world, it's open season. Yeah. Um, uh, so overall, uh, how do you think your life would be different if you didn't go into the war? It's a big question. Take your time. No, I, I uh, at the rate I was going, I probably would have ended up in jail, and having and having worked uh, in uh, in a professional capacity mm -hmm. as a counselor and a teacher in not only the juvenile hall but it's in San Quentin and in 
uh, the county jail uh, and, and yeah, the city jail. Uh, yeah, I even know what it's like, and it's funny because in my capacity as a counselor and a teacher, I did run into people that I grew up in the streets of San Francisco who uh, who I ran with, who were my age, and it was a damn shame to, to see them that they were in their 40s and their 50s. And they're locked up, and they're going in and out of jail and, uh, and, and detox programs and everything else. And I said, Jesus, if I, and I would think about that with the question you just asked. Jesus, what, God, if I didn't do what I did, and even being involved in Vietnam, I, said, God, I could be just like this cat over here, you know, yeah. some old dude in jail. Kind of scares me to think that I could have that could have been my life. So, I guess for my last question, if you could like summarize the central message and the lesson you learned from going into this war and the outcome of this war, like what lesson would that be for you? Well, I truly believe war is hell, and it's it's something that uh, I don't uh, I don't. Look at anybody having to go, have to experience. Uh, my son was born 30 odd, 30s, 37, 37, 36 years old, something like that. Uh, but I remember when he was born, the very first thing I said to myself was, There's no way you're going to go to war. You're, and, and even as a child, I would, I mean, I kept him away from guns and things like that. Mm -hmm playing with guns, even a toy gun, but uh, no, I couldn't, that's, yeah, war is hell, and nah, it, it's, it does nothing, nobody any good, I mean, there are other ways to work things out, and they can be worked out, it's not necessary to go to war and blow up everybody and kill people and kill communities, and, and uh, just the hate and the madness and the craziness, uh, to, yeah, it's just a waste. Right, so, thank you for this interview. You're welcome. Yeah. Nice meeting you. <laughs>